Um, well, it's good to be here again, even though it's virtual. Um, two years ago when we all met in person, it was uh, a bright spot in my career um, at, at COS. And so I'm happy to sort of be reunited again um, in this way. Just a quick background on, on who I am and where I'm coming from. Um, so I'm Nikki Pfeiffer um, with the Center for Open Science. And we have a mission um, to increase the openness, integrity, and reproducibility of research. We're a, a nonprofit organization um, that uh, is supported by uh, a number of uh, philanthropic funders, government funders, um, and now uh, a fee-for-service model um, where we have open source uh, software tools um, that are free for researchers. Um, oops, I didn't wanna, okay. Um, and our organization is sort of founded on these three main pillars. Um, the first is um, policy work um, where we develop incentives to embrace a, a research culture change, um, where we do our own research um, to gather evidence of this change um, and we build infrastructure, technology and software tools to enable the change. Um, and I, I think it's really important to think about what we're all really here for um, what sort of is our common bond around open science and this culture change um, that we're all working hard to produce different aspects, whether it's policy work or tool work or um, incentive work, um, even, even in the research itself um, where we're gathering this evidence. And we had that great keynote at the beginning where we're looking at how we can actually see evidence of this change in the way that so much of the COVID research um, that's getting done is, is actually being facilitated and organized. Um, so when we think about this, this is the, the typical curve that you'll see when we look at how research, uh, or sorry, how, how culture change actually um, gets implemented. And when you flip that um, sort of on its side, we, we like to look at it this way, where we apply these different tiers of our organization in the way that it supports this overall culture change, um, where we take our foundational pyramid pieces, which are the same, I think, for all of us, um, where we look at the infrastructure that really makes it possible, the way that we build these user interfaces and experience and workflows um, with the features and the products um, to make it easy. We work with these communities to make it um, normative and we build um, incentives so that there are there is a reward um, model in there. And then we work with policymakers to really hammer that home, make it um, required um, as part of the overall change. Um, and one thing that I think we'll all agree to, and I just wanted to put the slide in here just to help anchor that incentives for individual success typically are focused on getting it published, not so much on the getting it right. And I think that's an area where um, we're all putting effort. Um, and I wanted to also hammer home the, the part of reproducibility, which is really thinking about um, what your goal is and starting with that end in mind. So um, for reproducibility, we really need to show our work and share our work and it's all the work. Um, and that's something that OSF, uh, Center for Open Science has done with the tool that we've developed to maintain the OSF. Um, and it's an open workflow for researchers. It's infrastructure that really does support this culture change by enabling rigor and transparency in each step of the research life cycle. So, so we're looking now more broadly across all the different phases of, of research from planning um, to conducting, to reporting and discovery. Um, and the way that, you know, there's different tools out there that are doing all of these things and, and the OSF is really not the solution that meets all, all needs. It's really a way to integrate um, and to provide interoperability between um, all these different tools to just enable researchers to, to do this across all aspects of the research life cycle. Um, one of the things that is in that very beginning phase of planning is this concept of pre-registration. And I know some disciplines know this very well and others are, are starting to grow into the adoption. I just wanted to spend some time on that as part of my lightning talk today to think about um, as a, an open science tool, um, member that, you know, pre-registration, what, why is that a concept we should be thinking about and what is it? Um, and it's the reason why is it's, an, it's, it's a step in the process where you specify your research plan in advance. You separate that hypothesis generating part from the hypothesis testing part of your research, which really increases your credibility of your results and it reduces the, the publication bias that you could have. Um, and it just separates those, th those two things in a way that 
um, you can't conflate and you can't get into trouble when you interpret your results. Um, and so for us, um, you know, that's something that the OSF actually enables as part of a workflow, um, meaning that you can do a pre-registration of, of your research on the OSF. And what does that mean? It's, it's a place where you can set that research plan. Um, it's a time-stamped, immutable, or read-only um, place where you've written this all down, um, and it's created before you begin the study, and it's submitted publicly to a public repository or public registry. Um, and it includes your hypothesis, um, your data collection procedures, what variables you're going to manipulate and measure, and even your analysis plan, what your statistical model or scripts are that you might use to um, analyze your data. Um, and so one thing that we've recently rolled out is a, a tool for communities to create registrations. Um, so build a branded registry where you can have um, custom templates um, where you can set those registration specific questions. What, what it means in your methodology and your discipline um, is really critical. It doesn't, one size fits all is not the case. Um, as much as we wish for those kinds of solutions, it doesn't doesn't always work that way. Um, and create these simple workflows where you can answer the questions to, to define what your study designs are, um, separate those different types of um, hypotheses, um, and, and talk about how you're going to analyze your data. And the, the registry tool that we've built um, openly um, has a moderation workflow, which means communities are now empowered to set those standards. So you set the standard for your, what um, what you want to capture as part of a registration or pre-registration, um, but you can also determine what are those um, guidelines uh, for what meets those basic needs and what needs a little bit of improvement. Um, so you build, uh, we've, you can build a community of practice and you can set those standards and demonstrate the compliance with those standards and even um, demonstrate compliance with funders who are, are now seeking this out as part of their um, need for improved rigor of the research. And so a few of the community templates that we've been developing are for qualitative research, secondary data analysis, longitudinal studies, systematic reviews, and, and more. It's really endless. We have lots of communities that are coming up with um, exactly what this should look like, and we're excited to partner with them. So basically, in summary, um, branded registries enable the communities to implement open policies. So thinking about top guidelines or other um, standards that have been set for good open policies and to implement those and to track the compliance of, of the research outputs to improve the rigor. So really setting the bar really high at the beginning before research gets conducted about um, you know, what level of rigor you'll have, how you'll define um, what your analysis will look at um, before you even see the data. Um, and building a community. So engaging a community and building the capacity um, for this improved rigor um, collectively, and then supporting the entire research life cycle. Linking this with the final data set and the final paper just, again, increases the credibility of that final output. Um, and, the, and, the, and the ultimate goal here is, is to support this um, open science culture change. And, and so this is something that we're excited um, to, to be offering. And um, I wanted to give you some links for uh, a demonstration, which I didn't have time to give of, of the registries tool, um, a little background of the communities that we're working with. Um, and honestly, to, to ask you to reach out. I think there's lots of opportunities to collaborate with many communities. And so we'd love to hear from you. And we'd love to talk about how we could partner. Thanks, Nikki. Thanks. Um, looking for questions from folks. Not seeing any in the channel at the moment. Come on, all you sleepy people. Um, I've got one for you, Nikki, while, while we're waiting for others. Um, um, as a director of product there, talk a little bit about what's coming down the pike um, from COS. What can we expect from you guys? Um, what's cooking? Uh, sure, honestly, a lot to do with registration. We really feel like this is critical to research rigor um, and the, the full transparency uh, initiatives that we, we believe in. Uh, so while we've got branded registries that was just released, um, we'll be working um, to develop uh, an outcome reporting workflow as well. And so that's part of what's planned in 2021. Part of that uh, is funded from an NSF Eager Award where um, when you commit to a pre-registration plan, 
um, that's just the beginning, like I was saying, in that life cycle. So you're at the very beginning, you're in the planning phase. But now um, when you've completed that that study, it's really about reporting those workflows and reporting back against what you had committed to. Um, and so we're, we're excited to offer that workflow. And, and this ties into some of the funder requirements too that are, that are out there um, or recommendations at least uh, to help researchers be able to just push a button, report that, send it on to their funder too.